Well, Brian Cox is a pop musician turned world-renowned scientist known for exploring the secrets of the universe. Professor Cox rose to fame as a member of a British rock band in the early 1990s before transitioning to work as an experimental physicist exploring the cutting edge of particle physics. I spoke with Brian Cox recently while he was in Australia presenting at a cyber conference. Brian Cox, thank you for your time. At times like this of war and increased global tensions, it can be useful, I think, to step back and remember we are part of a much bigger solar system. If we really stuff this up, whether that be through wars or climate change or AI posing an existential threat as we keep being warned, is that it or after all the work you've done on this, do you think there is other life out there? The, the simple answer, the scientific answer, is we don't know yet. And we're looking for life beyond Earth in the solar system as we speak. So we have a rover on Mars called Perseverance, which is taking samples from below the Martian surface, which, which are going to be returned to Earth to see if life began or maybe still exists on Mars. Uh, we have a couple of missions, actually, one on, the, one on the way and one about to launch to Jupiter's moon Europa, which is a moon with more water underneath an icy surface than all of the oceans of the Earth combined. So again, a potential target for life. However, I think that most people I speak to uh, have the view that whilst microbes might be common, maybe even in the solar system, and certainly in the 400 billion star systems that make up the Milky Way galaxy, so it's a very big galaxy that we live in, uh, if you're talking about civilization, things like us that can think and explore the universe, I think it's a reasonable working assumption that there are no others in our galaxy. Now, I emphasise that's a guess, but um, it's based on a couple of things. One is, you think it's a remarkable fact that on Earth it took four billion years, give or take, from, to go from cell to civilization. It's a third of the age of the universe. So on this planet, we, we had to wait, essentially, a third of the age of the universe, and the planet had to protect, protect an unbroken chain of life for a third of the age of the universe to produce us. So that might suggest that civilizations are extremely rare. And, and then to answer your question, just I say that's a good working assumption because imagine the consequences if we do, as you said, stuff this up, that we might eliminate all intelligent life from a galaxy of 400 billion suns potentially forever. So I think that that perspective is a valuable one. Okay, so continuing on this slightly depressing train of thought, if we are hit by an asteroid, well, well, is it depressing? Would it go the way of the dinosaurs, and I could just... and do you expect we'd be replaced in a few million years by some other future species? Well, I, I, I don't. So yes, we could get hit by an asteroid. One of my great heroes, Carl Sagan, said that if the dinosaurs had had a space program, they'd still be around. <laughs> and by implication, we wouldn't be around. And it's kind of a joke. But actually, we take it quite seriously. So we, we monitor uh, asteroids whose orbits cross the orbit of the Earth. And recently, we've impacted an asteroid deliberately to see, to develop the techniques so that if we need to move on, then we could. So I emphasize that we have no indication there's an asteroid coming our way at the moment. But we do know that at some point in the future, one will. Now, in your new book, I know that you're looking at the significance of black holes in understanding the universe. I had the pleasure of going to your show in Perth last year where you really looked into the physics of black holes. It is pretty complex stuff after, after listening to your show. But tell us in layman's terms, yeah. if a human or object was dropped into a black hole, what would happen? What would it look like in there? And, and can anything that go into a black hole ever come out again? Do you know, that, that's a very profound question. And it's a question that um, Stephen Hawking really triggered the, the, the study of 50 years ago now in the 1970s. And we're beginning to get an answer. The short answer is now we think, most of us think, that if something falls into a black hole, then ultimately at least the data that's present in it, so in some sense that the pattern ends up being returned to the universe again in the far future, which seems really abstract, but in studying that, that question, what happens to something that falls into a black hole, we are now being forced into a, a theory of space and time. So, so an idea that space and time themselves have building blocks. I mean, imagine that, sort of atoms of time. 
Professor Brian Cox, an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Enjoy the rest of your time in Australia. We look forward to picking up your book. Thanks so much for making the time.